Stay calm under pressure. Engage positively with the community. Maintain a neat and professional appearance. Protect sensitive <laughs> info and respect privacy. Hey, Chad. Me when Arby's doesn't have the curly fries. <laughs> Okay, next slide. I'm happy that nobody had any uh, question. Awesome. Now you know what is professionalism. You're awesome. Question. Oh, wait, I'm a dog? Does that, yeah, does that dog have a gun? No, oh, he's pointing. Mm. You did it. He's reaching. There's yeah, supposed to be an animation where it spins. Can you visit, can you audiate the, the spin? Yeah. No, that's that's good. That's great. Huh? Oh, what's that? What? Huh? I think that was the dog. Oh. I really want to post this on Twitter. Oh. That sounded really bad. It sounds squishy. I'm not getting up. Should we wait say, for that or just keep it going? That. Okay, just keep it going. Okay. So these are supposed to fall in one by one. <laughs> so these are bad examples of professional. Okay. <laughs> Engaging in sexual intercourse with a suspect and or colleague in the backseat of your patrol vehicle and or in your workplace pipe room drama. Do I need to say less? Uh, yeah, I'm putting my two weeks notice. What the fuck I'm you mean? Jeremy. Uh, me. <gasps> <laughs> What? I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of hearing people about fucking in the pipe room. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gross. I don't use the pipe room. I have an entire fucking building. Uh -oh. Okay, Lucas. Are you the reason why the white couch is upstairs now? Um, no. Okay, next. I have a building in Sandy. Okay. You know we sleep there, right? Like me, Bruce, Bones. Yeah, you, you ever eyes, sit on that couch babe. and it feels like a slip and slide? Close your eyes, babe. Oh my and that's God. what I'm saving for. Okay, uh, point two. Not asking for consent of a colleague before taking a picture slash video of them. Um, oh! Jack Voss does that, like, every uh, fucking day. Um, oof. Wow, I failed. Uh, hey, you know, Forte, could you retweet my tweet? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Oh. Old. <laughs> <laughs> damn, that's some damn good time okay. right there. God Next, damn. Next, <laughs> uh, re a real example. Belittling a colleague by degrading them verbally in any way, shape, or form over the radio and or in person. There's a difference between constructive criticism and belittling. For example, <laughs> Officer King. One day, I fell off the roof and broke my leg and I couldn't be where he needed me to be, and he yelled over the radio, calling me incompetent. He later apologized, because he realized the real situation. <laughs> he was like, I'm so sorry, I didn't know you broke your fucking leg. <laughs> God. That was a real situation, but he quickly managed it. He said, I'm sorry, I was just heated. I didn't know your situation. It's okay. Yes. What if I'm just sassy? It's a different to, no, that's totally different. Yeah. No, we, we want that. Yeah, keep that. All right. Yeah. I hate your mustache. If Dixie is sassy, then what the fuck am I? That's <laughs> that's what really terrifies me, to be honest. I'm like a passive I'm menace. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a passive sass. Okay, uh, next point. <laughs> Stalking someone's place of residence and or asking about a fellow colleague's personal life. Oh, hell no. Girl, what? I don't care. Speaking rudely and making comments that are belitt belittling to civilians. That one's for me. This is why I made this PowerPoint. I love this. Yeah. But sh should I should I speak the example? Or just you okay. know. Okay. You're right. out your dirty laundry. All right. Well, yeah, I'll air it out. So, I was riding with uh uh, uh slacks. And. I noticed some people saying some derogatory terms about him. And for some reason, I got very fired up. And I walked up and started calling that group of uh, people. And I quote, take off your mask, you fucking pussies. <laughs> and started popping off. 
God damn! Yeah, for, for the lunch, what shift the was rest, that? Oh, no, no, oh, no, no, hold on. For the rest of the classroom, you want to tell us what group of people that was, Forte? So, uh, little did I know, it was uh, just a, a gaggle of chain gang. Oh, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I found out quickly, and a lot of other officers did as well. That were <laughs> with me, and that is... <laughs> Like your your actions have repercussions. I'm glad that you're okay. Crack today. It was really really bad. Did you just say crack? Yeah, we caught them selling crack today during a 99. Holy Wait, shit! Yep, they even gave me some. But sometimes saying the right thing is the wrong thing. Wait a minute, that sounded terrible. That example. Um. Yeah, that's a hard. Yeah, wait a minute. Rephrase. Keep your. Per you're an officer of the law, and you represent everybody that also wears the badge. Act like it. My man. Yeah. Okay. All right, next. Next slide. He antagonized Chang Gang, and I don't know why, but it's something really funny about Forte antagonized Chang Gang. Now you know some bad examples. What the fuck is that? You've been a bad girl or what? boy. What in the fuck, Forte? <laughs> Wait, there's a lot of animations right here, okay? Body ate them. So this is this is a gif. Yeah. Just straight up, okay? Yeah. Then this image would slowly slide in and fade in. Can you post the gif? Oh. Jack Voss. Oh. <laughs> Can you audiate him? No. Okay, fair enough. I could... No. <laughs> I think Forte got okay. punished and he's doing this. Moving on really to the next funny. topic at hand. De-escalation. What is it? De-escalation is about smoothing out a heated situation without resorting to force. We use our words and strategies to bring peace and ensure everyone stays safe and cool. There's no reason to escalate. We don't need to. Verbal judo. Does anybody know what that is? That was a Captain Turner question. That was a Captain Turner question. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bro. You became the thing that you feared, and I love that about you. I, 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 I see a lot of him in me a lot, and I hate Excuse it. Excuse me? Girl. <laughs> no, like the way I, I walk and you. shit. On this month? The month of July? Well, yes. Well, yes. Well, yes. Wait, can you audiate the squirrel? Wait, no, stop. De escalate. <laughs> That's what he's saying. All right, fair enough. Wow. Wow. Why is de-escalation important? De-escalation is crucial for cops because it's all about cooling things down before they heat up. When cops use their words in de-escalation skills, they can prevent things from getting physical, ensuring everyone's safety, and earning trust. It's a key part of keeping the peace, protecting lives, and maintaining a calm vibe when things get intense for law enforcement. We have the power of wearing a uniform and a badge that will put people behind bars and people naturally are afraid of. If you try to get the trust of people that are afraid of us, that is a powerful, powerful thing to have. With respect. Not in the office, but on the outside as well with civilians in the community. It's all about connections. All right. Coming up are a bad example. I have a Wait, question. Oh, you have a question? Oh, yeah. Is that like Wi Fi? Like, if I have a bad connection, did I fail to de-escalate? I don't know. No? Oh. I think you just got a bad connection with your Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> All right, so here's some bad examples of uh, 
Oh, no, wait. Good example. Whoops. Sorry. Good examples. Listen up and really care about what they're saying. There's nothing more powerful than simply listening. Keep your cool to smooth things over. If you're a calm energy, they're reading your aura. They're reading, like, kind of the vibes you're given. It's literally placebo effect. They're going to calm down. Use smooth words, not heated ones. Don't call someone a fucking pussy. Take your mask off. Give them choices to feel in charge. That's what verbal judo is. Wait. Is this the punishment? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, the slideshow, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, he's only shitting on himself. Is it? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to yeah. mention every time I wrote, I wrote about me. Okay. Yeah. I like this. Ask questions to understand what's up with them. How is your day? Is a powerful one. Nobody says that enough around here. I I, I think. I have a question. Yeah. How's your day? It's peachy. Okay. How are you? I'm good. Now we have a stronger relationship. That was wow. a good example. Now we're going to go to the pipe room. And exchange no. phone numbers and insurance information. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have to give you my insurance information? <laughs> I don't know. Insurance. <laughs> I think renter's That's a insurance. Bad example. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Set clear rules in a respectful way. Like during a traffic stop, this is how it's gonna go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not being mean about it, but you're just walking them through. <laughs> So stupid. Find common ground to fix. Uh, to find a fix. A violent yeah. collision. Fix connection. I don't know. <laughs> Give it time or step back to cool things down. Now, what do you think about just the gold walk watch? Walk away sometimes. Say, I'll be with you in just a moment. What do we think? Bring what? in backup if things get intense. Oh. I, I don't. I. I mean, we we should just be requesting backup. I think it's cool, but at this eh, point, eh. Uh, give know. props for good behavior. I don't know if I'd ever to keep wear things it. smooth. Sort of like Does if you're in clean? the cells with somebody and you're like, you know what, uh, you know, since you worked with me and I worked with you, I'm gonna do this, you know, etc. I do like this watch. This is an automatic that they sell, but any Ooh. questions? Nothing. Okay. My only problem is that I feel like this coating would scratch. Good work. Now you know some examples of how to de-escalate. That's supposed to be spinning. Oh my to, god, to... what are they doing? No, they're hugging. Oh wow. Like they're spinning each other. Can yeah, you audio what they're cute. doing? Milk and mocha. Love milk and mocha. They're so cute. Okay, now we're going to talk about some bad examples. Okay, well, silver and gold does look pretty hard good, to read, it seems. I will assist. I tell you what, they do actually do this watch in a titanium that I do, I do like. God, I can't even read it. The titanium I like. It's it's silver, but it's a little. Are you blind? I can read it. A little darker, but I, I do like the titanium. Okay, material. it might just be me. I don't know. Uh, you need new eyes. Calling civilians and or colleagues derogatory terms. Can you give an example? Can we get an example? <laughs> Not YouTube, I'll ask you. <laughs> <laughs> We're so messy. We're so messy. <laughs> I just want an example. Can That's I get one more? Like, yeah. No, that would be unprofessional. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm ready. Saying the phrase no balls to a colleague and or civilian you were speaking with. What about no pussy? Dead ass, maybe? We can edit the PowerPoint. Saying the phrase, yeah, yeah. do it, you won't, to a colleague and or civilian you're speaking with. your tastes are excessively expensive. You know what it is? Drawing your firearm Aaron, during a you peaceful altercation a watch, with a colleague and or civilian. Oh, within wow. a decent price range, Swear I recommend jomashop.com. Not a sponsor, but jomashop. Having a bad altercation with a colleague and, and or civilian, the and therefore creating a diss track about them. You know what it is for me, Eric? Watches for me as a, a hobby. When we all know you're driving your I don't own a lot of watches, though. <laughs> Self-identifying <laughs> as cop. I can talk a couple bitches with that shit. Hold on. But 
I missed what the example was. Fuck. Oh, which I didn't do one. Oh, I heard it was the bubble one. That's the one that we were. Oh. oh, yeah. Yelling bubble during a pursuit when we all know your driving is terrible. <laughs> the last one. <laughs> is yelling testicle on the radio unprofessional? I think What's the context? We found a notebook and it was on the scene of a crime. And when we checked page one, it said testicle, testicle. So on radio, I said testicle. What the fuck? Hasn't somebody literally yelled penis over radio before? We had a whole penis conversation. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. going to be a lot now. Hold on. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and then the last point here is self identifying as Calpret. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does you know? not de escalate in any way, shape, or form. Uh, uh, yep. Yep. That no, was he, my sheriff. He, uh, he, he de escalates. He stops the escalation by usually force. So Just being louder. He gets loud, and if it gets to the point where he's got to pull a knife or a gun, he'll do it. Yeah. But, you know. I like this watch. This one is the one that I ordered. Mr. Police person, so I'm going to need one of y'all misters to handle Thank that you. One. Thank you. Get to work. Chop, chop. Uh, yeah, I got it. Wait, we got two <laughs> more. No, I need to eat the fuck up. Good shit, bitch, Anita. Good shit. You have fucking loot. Good fucking shit, bitch. Now you know how not to, to de escalate a situation. When in doubt, just 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 don't. Can you audiate this? No. When in I doubt, mean, like, just don't like... de-escalate. No, de-esc like you want to de-escalate. Oh. You don't want to escalate. Okay. When in doubt, don't uh, escalate. Can you put no, on like a man don't. accent? Like be be like uh, man man and uh, just say the words. Uh, uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's changing the side. <laughs> Who let you two be in the same room? Okay, together? good work. Now you know the <laughs> basics of professionalism. Now get out there and be the best officer you can be. And there's a there's a kitty in a, a cop car. What, is, wow. what does the cat sound like? Wee can woo. You, uh, no, <laughs> not, not like the, the kitty. Nope, Let's that's hear it. Yeah. That's the order. Wee woo. What? <laughs> what? That made Bird. no sense. Is the kitty making wee woo sounds? Yeah, that car don't got sirens. But why okay. did you reverberate? Like, why did you, like, like the, when asked the, to do it again? If the window was open, that cat would have its head out the window going, ah, but it's not. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's the end of the presentation. This was amazing. Good job, Forte. I'm proud of you. Good work. It looks like it took effort. Hey, come here. Yeah, what's up? It took longer than I wish it did. I'm proud of you. Actually, for I was going to go help th that out, but what's up? Oh, what, wait, what? I was going to go help at the front desk with what was going on. No, the effort I got it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to share a report with you. Okay. It's a work in progress. What's your state ID? Uh, 1269. Also, check out my PayPal. Damn, you actually got the best one. All right, I shared it. I'll see. Oh. I like this. <clears throat> yeah, there's gonna be more added to it. Uh, I know it's a lot of reading, but they're not really meant to like read it all in one sitting. It's like whenever they run into this issue, they'll just go to that section, like go through the steps. No, this is fucking phenomenal. This is great. I love this. Um, yeah, there's been issues where in shift two, we have uh, people being promoted to PPO and officer and still don't know how to do like half their job because they're being they're being rushed. And our academies are rushed as well. And it's starting to show. So... I'm trying to like figure out some kind of some kind of way to figure out uh, how to circumvent that because they want in quotes uh, things to be more fun. Huh? Love you. Love you. Bye. I don't know. I was doing a I was doing a PPO test. Let's go to the dispatch uh, room. Hold on. Excuse me. Excuse me. Pass the mic. <clears throat>
Sorry, I figure if we're gonna have this conversation, I don't want. No, it's fine. If there is a PPO, I, would... I just don't want to offend anyone. No, it's fine. Uh, I was just I was giving somebody a quiz to go to PPO, and I was testing them on their like SOPs and stuff, and I got told that uh, a member of Command Plus, it could be High Command or Command, stated, and I quote, "Don't just stand there asking questions. Go do something fun." And I just sat there and I was like, I'm not here to do fun. I'm here to make sure they're not going to kill somebody while they're on the street. While I'm making sure they know their SOPs. Wow, I would. I don't I don't mind like having fun on scenes and stuff like that. But when I'm trying to do a test to make sure they're good to be promoted to PPO, I'm not looking to like have them laughing and having fun during it. No, I th th there was a it's lot just of distracting them, in my opinion. There's a lot of responsibility with this job. A lot of responsibility. The cheesiest quote you'll ever hear in this job is with great power comes great responsibility. We have a lot of power as an officer, but it comes with a lot of fucking responsibility. And if you fail to know how to use that responsibility, then you're, you're going to violate someone's rights. And then you're going to be shocked Pikachu face when you turn around, and you're told, yeah, hey, badge and gun, please have a good one. So, I mean, in my mind, it's more like. I don't know. You have to like. I don't know how to put it because, like, obviously, I want people to be a cop and I want them to have fun on duty and stuff like that. But at the same time, you kind of have to, like, earn your way to having, like, goofing around, I guess. I hate you bringing just, up, like, I don't know. The, the Maybe past. It's not like I don't want people to have fun is bad. It sounds bad, but, like, if you want to goof around, you kind of have to earn that. Yeah, I think, um, I really hate bringing up the past. I really, really hate bringing up the past. But I remember when I was a solo cadet. And solo cadet phase, I don't know if you know Decker, but essentially it could, it extended for an extended period of time, maybe similar to your old department. But what? I know what, but what? Uh, I, I was a solo cadet for like three months and it was like no bullshit, just do the job three months. And it was, it was to the point where I started like losing interest because it was just, I could not contain myself. The idea of just straight up doing the job. But the nicest part about that sort of, I don't want to call it hazing because it really wasn't hazing, but pretty much being told you earn your fun was that when it came time that I was able to have the freedom, at least I knew if it was told to like, hey, time to lock in, I could lock the fuck in. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I want people to enjoy themselves and I Absolutely. want like, you know, the variety of officers and stuff. I think my issue is like. I don't mind who's on the street as long as they can do the bare minimum. We we had um, a PPO from BCSO and a PPO from LSPD riding together today, actually. And we said, you're going to do a high risk stop on a vehicle that was a 99. We went to go pull up behind it. And, uh, you know, one officer, Frost, was behind it. Uh, like, shift two Frost was behind it. And then they said, we're going to do a high risk stop. And the deputy and the, P the PPO, the officer and the deputy that were PPOs, like, Drove up behind him like it was a traffic stop, and I said, "Guys, come on, let's go. It's a you know, it's a high risk stop." And then they pulled up in front of them, and then like reversed to them. The person we were trying to do a high risk stop on, and then we, I said, "What are you guys doing?" And then they went on the opposite. They they just like sat there like they were doing like a traffic stop, but like the reverse. And then the ninety nine car pulled ahead of it, and then they like readjusted an entire high risk stop just because they didn't know how to do a high risk stop. And I talked oh to him and I God. was like, I was like, do you guys not know how to do high risk stops? What, what happened? And they're like, we did it day one of Academy and haven't been told anything since. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, OK. Uh, and then we ended up doing like high risk stop training for like an hour after that because no, it was just us on duty anyway. But like, yeah, it was like me, Viv, them and Frost and like some other somebody else. But yeah, I like, just it's not the, I, it's not the sh I, I, honestly. I'm shitting on the fucking like training process more than I'm shitting on those on those guys. Dude, I have been saying for the longest time that the training process. I, I used to tell people that. I, I used to go around and tell command this, and I, I said, people aren't going to recognize the top. They're going to see it from the bottom. If you start as a cadet and work your way up and a cadet comes up to me and says, I have a problem. No offense, but I'm going to take that problem with a little bit more severity than I would a sergeant, right? Because they have something that they want to tell me 
And a lot of the times when a cadet comes up to me and says, listen, Flop, I have a problem. It's something on my mind I, I, I got to bring up. It's something valid within the training process. And it's yeah, something that they're like actually pressed about, or like not pressed, but like they're yeah. actually concerned with. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and I, I used to tell command back when we had the three captains, I said, listen, like, I don't want to, I don't want to be a dick here, but if cadets have concern over the training process, respectfully, you guys are not going to see it as well as I'm not going to see it. But I think if we have multiple cadets coming forward with the same concern, we should be taking that very seriously. And I had said at the beginning that I think the, the the training process needs to be extended out a little bit because the problem is that people, I used to know people who are now great officers, un unironically, Forte uh, was one of these people who was given the predicate that if you're not good in 30 days, you're gone. And I told him, I said, I'd rather you take 60 days if it means that you're going to be a great officer. And I don't think that you should worry about that deadline. But the problem yeah. was that the way that it was drilled into him was you need to know your shit within 30 days. That's kind of how they told it. That, that's even like how they yeah. made me feel. Like I didn't have to go to academy or anything because, you know, I'm perfect. But I, <laughs> yeah. I came in as yeah, a non-solo <laughs> and then they made me a PPO within like two, three weeks or whatever. Like after like four shifts or something. Um, and then they, uh, they were like, yeah, in 30 days, you'll get a check in. And if you don't pass, then you're done. And I'm like, okay. And then I never got a 15 day check in because, you know, yeah, dog, nobody ever checked in. Yeah, the <laughs> the, the 15 day check in thing. There's a lot of like remembering nobody when checked the checked in on my 30 day. Jesus, I just got promoted on day 32, and that was it. Nobody checked in with me at all. I don't think anyone really cared with you. To be fair, That's probably true. Uh, but to be fair, I was leading better than half the command was at the time. Uh... Whenever I was a PPO, so uh, but not not you know taking a break and bragging about myself for a bit uh the the biggest thing that i think right now is there needs to be i don't want it to be like a boot camp because then like it's gonna feel like people aren't gonna want to get on duty because it's like oh great i have to go to you know i got training today because that that, that that you know that's how we felt at our at our older departments like when they were like okay academy's tomorrow it, it could run up to 12 hours and we were like, oh, my fucking Lord, we don't want to be here for 12 hours kind of deal. Yeah, absolutely. Like eight to 12 hours or whatever. Like, obviously, it flew by when you're actually doing it. But like, you know, nobody wants to act like even the FTOs like would get burnt out faster than the cadets because the cadets are actually learning. The FTOs are just repeating shit they've been saying for months at that point. Brother, you should go check the last time I have an FTO report. I am. I don't do I don't do uh, I don't do right alongs unless I have to. I don't either. I am so unbelievably burnt out of the FTO program. I told Turner, because he's like, Flop, I noticed you didn't put your name down for FTO interest. I said, Turner, to be honest, I don't I don't want to do it. Like, I, I, I respect it, and you I think shafted. it's great. Well, I... As the skeleton crew, you guys were kind of, like, forced into it as well. Yeah. And I told him, I said, I'll help get the ball rolling. I said, but after that, I'm done. Like, I don't... I don't care. I'm done. And I've been with it since, and I have no problem being with it. But yeah, it, it was kind of a, you should put your name down, which was kind of a nice way of saying you're going to become an FTO. And I said, okay, that's fine. But it definitely yeah. felt more like, okay, here I am here, here I'm, I'm doing my thing. But yeah, no, since assisting with the FTO program, I, I definitely kind of have a little bit of a bottleneck of suffer to see it from the beginning. And I called out a lot of these, these issues early and I feel like the issues went away so that they could come back and be told to me later, sort of like a history repeats itself thing. And it's, it's very telling that we are rushing too much. And I feel like because we're rushing too much, we're never getting to that next step. Yeah. I mean, I think there's like a lot of different things. Like for example, the, um, the Academy, I don't mind that it's short. It's like five, six hours at most on the long days, which is fine. Um, but like, we don't get time to go. We spend more time on chases than we do, like making sure people know how to run guns on the MDT and making sure they know how to do like all the, like, you know, the technical stuff. They, they would rather know that they know how to talk on radio than know how to process somebody, which is a concern in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I, I used to tell people. That my whole point of, of you is I want to go like this. 
and know that I could trust you 100% to do the job. Yeah. Like the other day, uh, Hemsworth, who's a PPO, apparently used to be a cop back in the day. Is he shift uh, two or shift three? He's shift two. Okay. Uh, he he was made PPO after two shifts, and he didn't know how to run a hot gun. Hmm. And uh, it resulted in somebody not getting charged for three different incidents, and he had to get warrants put out for him. Oh, boy. Um. So, I mean, it's not his fault. Nobody taught him. He probably hmm. should have asked, but nobody taught him. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't think there's any one person or one thing to blame. I just think that like, I th I think that with Academy stuff, they're focusing too much on things that like they could be learning in the field instead of the things that aren't common. Like they should be learning how to do like VAFs or search warrants or technical stuff. And then like, you know, and then like maybe like traffic stops or you maybe like negotiations. Uh. I don't think I've ever done a VAF on a vehicle. Uh, every time I do a VAF, I get told that it's not a violent felony. And then I sit there and question, how is reckless evading or reckless driving not a violent felony? Yeah, I, I don't know. Not, I guess it's not intentionally violent, and that's their argument. But the, I guess the intent for violence, and yet at the same time, the act of a robbery in itself is violent. Yeah, that's the only time I ever see, a, hmm. ever see that, or shooting. But, I mean, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like... Matt, I'm never getting out of here. Like chase stuff, like comms and chase stuff. That's stuff that can be learned with an FTO. Mm. You, you don't need that in academy, in my opinion. Like have the FTO drive them around a few times and then teach them how to do it while doing that, and they'll be fine. Because every time we go into a chase, even after academy, they still don't know what they're doing. So it's not like it's helping, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think removing a lot of the fluff out of academy. I will say shift three's last academy went very well. I think we cut out a lot of the bullshit and we just kind of got people into doing things. But I do think. I, I, oh God, I'm going to say it. I kind of miss the old version of Academy. Like I said, I do too. I, I mean, I like the old version in terms of like. Transparency. No, uh, well, yeah, we could be, you know, we'd have to like use mm. weird. We could use layman terms for everything. But yeah. like, uh, the only thing I didn't like was just the amount of like how long we were there for. Or, well, I was at my academy for. Mm. Um, like, again, like, 8, 10, 12-hour days was rough. Oh, hell and then, yeah. And, like, now, like, people are like, ugh, four hours? When is this going to end? I'm like, are you? That's you like guys people don't with Back in my day, you guys don't know. The only time I've ever pulled the back in my day card on anybody since I, was, uh, since I came back was I heard a cadet go, ugh. What do we have to do for processing evidence? I'm like, bro, don't even get me fucking started. You know what it was like to yeah, run like individual that. casings? I wish you knew how bad it was. Oh, my God. My <laughs> old department, I had to type out every individual casing. Yeah. and every. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, that was the first time I'm like, I don't want to hear it. I can put on a VR headset and recreate a scene. You got luxury out here. I That's had like, flip phones when you had iPhones. I crawled so you could walk. This, this is like when... <laughs> You're talking to your grandpa about like, oh God, I hate that my my connection isn't working right now for my my Google Maps, and they're like, "Well, pull out the map," and you're like, "A oh, what?" And you're yeah. just like, "A well, map? How do I read this day, thing?" I have my damn Atlas book. <laughs> we we had a map and a compass, and I'm like, "Uh, <laughs> God, what do I do with this?" Yeah, no, um, that was the only time I ever pulled like the old card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm talking with the shift two PNT person. We're trying to come up with like. A curriculum or something i of, think i think there should be like a checklist of like if they do not know this they are not going to be a ppo or a full officer or whatever yeah i i'm gonna suggest to you uh i forget uh if frost is pnt lead or if it's co-lead with maple I don't, uh I, don't I heard maple wasn't doing much and somebody else got it i think oh. it was frost Okay, uh, then yeah, PNT lead, I would speak with Frost and just say, hey, this is kind of what we got going on. This is our, our thought process right now with everything. What do you think? Yeah, I gotta, uh, I gotta talk to him about... Uh... I, I think it would be good to bring it up with him and just say like, hey, uh, I'll keep it a buck with ya. But I think that this should be good for everybody to know, not just shift two, not just shift one, but like, what, what do you think about getting on board and getting everybody to know this stuff? Sort of like, this is stuff that you need to start learning and knowing by the time your PPO phase is over, essentially. 
Like, by, like yeah, like I said, just like a checklist. Say like, hey, if they don't know ABC, then they're not going to be a PPO. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I got to talk to them about the SOPs that they put out for the tax stuff anyway, because I noticed that there's nowhere on there that states uh they need to keep like full patrol members in mind. Which uh, which tax stuff? In the SOPs. It's in the senior chat. Oh, uh, let me see. Hold on. They I... they add, they gave us the the tax SOPs. And I said, uh, I read through them and I noticed that there's, a, I just skimmed, so I didn't like read every detail, but I don't think there's anywhere in there that says they need to like, cause it says they can ride unmarked to, or they can drive unmarked vehicles to go and look for individuals that have warrants or whatever, but they can't do normal patrol. Um, so one, they're just using civilian cars. They're not even using unmarked police cars. So they have no lights. Uh, Mm. and two or at least as far as i'm aware the only one i saw was den and he was driving a gauntlet i'm pretty sure we don't have an unmarked gauntlet so yeah i'm pretty sure um, we don't but also it's, it doesn't say it anywhere in the sops that they need to keep the numbers patrolling in mind so like if there's three officers patrolling it technically a tech person can still go unmarked and just drive around do whatever they want yeah that's crazy because to the cib sops uh i i did my interview with cib and i was told i believe the number was 12 or more or 14 or more if it's less than, I can't go unmarked. I just want to go back to the days, like my old apartment, where I could just drive an unmarked charger, just have it like bright ass red. Damn. Oh, um, or blacked out. Good days, man. Right? Yeah. No kidding. Nobody ever knew I was a cop. I could just roll behind him and shoot him in the back and keep going. They wouldn't know what's ahead of him. <laughs> now I'm fucking marked like a damn beacon. You know, I remember there was a time where I got rolled up on by some people with a. A friend of mine who I haven't seen in a while and they got out with melee weapons and they clapped the fuck out of like nine of them Ooh. in Legion Square. <laughs> they used to have a nickname too. Bro, I, wait, what? I forget it. Oh. It was my friend Bison. Were... Oh, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I remember like... Bison and I used to shoot a lot of fucking people. I'm not going to lie. If I... I remember in my old apartment, if I, uh, because we weren't like strict long sleeves, um, uh -huh. we changed during the summer, we changed the short sleeves and stuff. But, uh, if they were calling out a shootout, I would go to the locker room and I put on a long sleeve and glove and like black gloves and put on like a black vest that said police in the smallest letters and a black hat. So, so I was like, like as little of my skin was showing as possible, you sick fuck. but it still didn't cover my face. That way it was harder to see me whenever I was running around doing stuff. Holy shit, that's smart. Dude, I'm gonna go put on I'm gonna go see if I can put on a ghillie suit. I'm gonna wear that shit around. I want a ghillie suit. You kidding me? I wanna go look at fucking people hunting or fishing and just go sit in a bush and be a bush wookie. Shit sounds fun. Bro, I'm telling listen, if we had a little bit more leeway, man, imagine if we could change our outfits again, like on the move. Dude, like if, in our cars if or I whatever. Could keep clothes in, in my duffel bag in the back of my car, my god. I would, I'd be throwing shit on all the time. I'd be like, all right, cool. Civilian clothes with a vest. I'm going to go pretend I'm a local. <laughs> or I'm going to go put on a ghillie suit and sit in a bush and wait for somebody to walk past me. I'd be doing that shit all the fucking time. That shit sounds like a good time. I'm not going to lie to you. That shit sounds I like mean, a great time. It's perfectly legal. It's just, you know, it's against SOPs. Yeah. That falls under one of those, like, not technically against, but definitely shitty. Actually, I don't think it's anywhere in the SOPs saying we can't do that. I would double check the CIB SOPs and see kind of what their regulations are. I don't give a shit about CIB. What? I mean, I'm talking about patrolling. Yeah, you're if, right. I, if I'm patrolling and I have to go to Cyprus for a big ass shootout, I would just throw a ghillie suit on in the trunk and then just like walk around in bushes. Yeah, I got that. I, uh, I actually have an outfit that I wear whenever I go up to the fishing spot. Completely against SOPs, but it's one of those like no one says anything because it's funny. Are you just undercover? Are you just wearing like a fisher outfit? Pretty much. Here, follow me. Hold on. I'll show it to you. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I only wear this when I'm doing boat patrol because you can't say shit to me if I'm on a boat. <laughs> uh, where is it? There it is. Oh, this is my fishing outfit. Nice. <laughs> this is my, hey, you doing good there? What you catching? What you fishing for? I don't, yeah, I mean, oh, wait, hang on. This is this was going to be, before I drop the weed shit, this is going to be my outfit for going in on a... I hope you're wearing a drug rug. For weed ops. 
Did I delete it? Oh, I, oh no, I didn't. <laughs> you look like the kind of guy. You got the gold that, AirPods. Yeah, you look like the kind of guy that they would take a photo of and it would just say on like a big caption, marijuana hates this man. Click here for five <laughs> easy steps on how to smuggle your drugs. Yeah, it is. This is like, and I got rings and everything. It's great. Holy shit. This might be Dude, one of I'm my favorite outfits I've ever pimping. seen. Yeah, I'm straight up pimping, man. Holy shit. You're actually a I was pimp. Gonna, I was actually going to wear this, but I, I was like, oh, I don't want to do weed anymore. Yeah. Damn, you should definitely save that, though. Oh, it is saved. Keep that on don't you at we, all times. Um, don't we? Uh, we're getting a new uniform soon, aren't we? I think so. I, I know Slacks kind of went, oop, hint, hint, BCSO coming, LSPD going to get treated too. And I, mean, I don't mind these uniforms. I just kind of wish there was more, like, I want short sleeves or something. Sometimes. I want short sleeves. Do you know, I, I want a hoodie so bad, but I know I'm going to, I'm never going to get that. Oh, but, yeah. They're going to keep it professional still, but. Yeah. Do, do you want to ride for a few? Uh, it's up to you if you plan on going 42. Yeah, I need to go to sleep. It's 4 a.m. All right. I got to be up tomorrow anyway. I got to go have labs done. Ooh, fun. Everything good? Yeah, I just had to poop in some vials and give it to him. Oh. Good old yeah, stool samples. Yeah, shit was not fun. I did not like that. Yeah, I've never heard anyone have a positive experience from that. That shit is rough. I, uh, I, had, to, like, I had to, like, douse my shirt in essential oils and then, like, walk it outside and, like, cover my nose with it. What? Yeah, I doused my shirt in essential oils and then I covered my face so I didn't smell anything and then I took it outside and I did everything outside that way it was like hard to you know hard to smell. Yeah, no that's that's it's crazy. Also just gross in general. You just you gotta like poop in a bucket and like scoop it out. It's fucking disgusting. Yeah, it's you know what's so crazy is that it's it's very common and I don't know <laughs> It is common, which is like why I don't mind talking about it, but it's just it's just gross. I had a roommate who had to and attempted to do it in the bathroom. And Ew. well, what he fucked up was the cap that goes on top. He accidentally flushed and we had a clog and I'm like, what is this? What the fuck's going oh, on? Oh no. <laughs> it was the fucking cap stuck in the. <laughs> My worry is that like, there's like in one of them, there's like this red solution you have to put it in. And then it's like shake well. And I'm like, oh, it's fucking gross. And I was like, what if I don't put the cap on right? And I go to shake the uh, shit. No! <laughs> but luckily the caps are like industrial grade. Dude, that shit's hard to get off once you put it on. No, that's good. As it should be. That that should be the tightest seal in the world. There should be Bro, nothing. I was, I was gloved up. There was no way I was getting shit on me. L literally. No. I was gloved up. I, I wasn't going anywhere. Oh. Oop. That's you. Good Wyatt. Oh, wait, no, that's not you. That's a, uh, that's a, uh, that's Loki. Ooh. Let me go reach out to Loki. Let me go see All what's right, going have on. Fun. Thanks. Have a good night. Good, like, impromptu fucking ma'am. Like, it's actually scary. I don't think I give hey. woman. Hey, are you gossiping about me? No. As soon as you saw me turn around and went, hey. No, no we're talking about how people call me a woman, like, all the fucking time. I'm fish, I guess. What does that mean? I'm fish? Yeah, yeah I'm fish. Uh, yeah. We need Slayer of the Day back, I guess. For real, True. girl. True. This True. Limpress True. is not cultured. Hold on, we gotta help him. <laughs> Limp worse? No. <laughs> oh. Oh. What? Oh. Baby, that's you. You're one of us. What? <laughs> Am I? It means it, uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you? Hold on. I'm scared. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, girl. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what this means. Not the am I when he's married to a whole ass man. Listen, right. I'm, I'm married to my mans, okay? That's right. A, that's all okay. I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know that, and I know that flop is a slay word, and so is cunt. That's. I think I got it. I don't know how we claim you, but we claim you. Hold on, I got this. I, I can fix this. Okay. Oh. Are you googling it? Oh, oh there we go. girl. I resolved. Not yet. Mm, okay. See, Flop de Gong, one would say those two statements are the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Straight and single right, girl, the right. this bitch. Me, we know what you are, bitch. <laughs> Let's go. Like, make them. Hello? Flop? Yeah, I'm hey, committing terrorism. I'm about to jump this bitch. Who are you jumping? 
<laughs> Can I ask a question? Yo. Oh. Do you want a business? Business. But do I own a business? Red key? What? I said, do I own a business or do I want a business? What'd you say? No, no, no. I, I sorry. I was just want to make sure I was had the right number. That's all. Hey, Reggie, how you doing? Why? Why'd you ask about a business? I wasn't. I, I was just making sure you had a business. I knew that shit was gonna be bad for him. Yeah, what? Like me because because if you didn't what? have so a you're business, saying I can't do ter terrorism? Like no, no, no. I'm just saying. I, I, I was saying if you didn't own a business, I would have. I would have assumed another name. I, I don't have this number saved, so. Oh. Wow, you don't have my number saved? Yeah, you I, called me the other day. I got it. Well, I got a new phone and I keep assuming that I have people's contacts and I don't. And I keep fucking up. Wow. Powerful. Fucked up. Hey, I'm going to commit terrorism today. Why? Because you didn't answer my first phone call. You hung up on me. I never was in the middle of a presentation. I don't want to be rude. I mean, you could have called me back afterwards. You didn't. I literally just walked out of the... I'm committing terrorism. I'm committing terrorism. Hold you on. did this flop. Hey, so hold on. I got I got so much going on right now. Hold on. Uh, I gotta respond to a hostage situation. You're not the one doing the hostage taking, are you? I'll see you soon, flop. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. What's your twenty? We're in the cells. Loki's currently on the phone with the She just hung up. The hostage, she had their head pop, so she went and looked for another one, and then she said, I found another one, and then hung up and said she'd call me back. I'm gonna scream. Hey, so I'll call you, but no, 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 do not come in. Do not come in. Excuse me. If, if you come in, I'm gonna arrest you. <laughs> Does anyone have a like last known or vehicle known that Pipsqueak likes to drive or place they like to go? Uh, hey, from it's possibly the gray photo they parked outside. When I was taking photos of the vehicle, he got into the vehicle and drove away with it. I'm gonna flag the plate now, Stemba. Hey, what's up? I'm gonna fucking. I have your head. child. Oh god. Uh, okay, is she okay? Like oh yeah, she's fine. We're going to the Pride uh, concert. Yeah, she wants to know if you want to come with. Yeah. Probably either in that or the other I don't know yeah, if I'll be able to get out of what I'm doing, but I can definitely come by and say hi. They didn't. All right, we'll be at the, so at the Vinewood Bowl. Okay, I'll swing by. I also know Forte's doing a little concert there, too, so I, I, I like to pop in and see him do that, too. So. All right, well, then we will see you up there. Cool, awesome. I'll see you soon. All right, bye-bye. 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 Bro, this is literally the dumbest shit. Hold on. I'm sorry. I had two phone calls and I had Hazel Luna chasing me on a bike. Can you? Okay. What's going uh, on? I heard people arguing in MRPD parking lot, walked out of professionalism meeting, saw a man beat Pipsqueak with wrench, held gun to him, told him, put his hands up, arrested him, charging him with assault with the deadly. Pipsqueak calls me and says, if you don't let him, I have a hostage. If you don't let him go, I'm going to kill the hostage. Pipsqueak said that, or someone said that they have a hostage? No, Pipsqueak, after they got up at the hospital, said that to me. Oh, Pipsqueak just sent me a text. Got a new hostage. Jesse Adler, ring me when you let David free. Yeah, that's a great hostage. He realizes that Jesse's going to, it really has his, him hostage. That man's gonna be held by the balls for the rest of his fucking life. Uh, it, also, dude, David. Dude, what headache. the fuck am I supposed to do about this? We don't negotiate to let people out of fucking prison. Are they already the in cells. prison? No, they their head pop. But they're in uh, here. They're in, our they're cells, in the cells. Getting medical. The, yeah, the head, their head pop. I mean, um, the, I, I would I would think the rational response is they're already sent up. Well, then That's what if fair. they do something to Jesse? Uh, I'm gonna call. Okay, it. update. Pipsqueak said. Oh, they're calling me, but they said they took Jesse Adler hostage, and they're gonna kill Jesse if I don't let this guy to the cells. 
Hello? Yeah, well, you're... Well, now I get to be the one with the option. Waiting for him to come back. Yeah. And, uh, we don't have any, like... Uh, we need to know where you are with the hostages so we know the hostage is safe. You're... You're what? You're towing? I'm so confused. Uh... Uh, look, uh, I, this, you have a hostage, but you're towing with them? Six, six, eight is going to stay mobile around MRPD in case Pipsqueak tries to come here with the hostage. Copy. I just need a yes uh, or no. Do you want me to call Jesse? Can I, can I get, uh, I'm going to have an officer call Jesse that knows Jesse and get confirmation, okay? Okay, I'll call you back. Oh. Uh, hello? Hi, Jesse. It's Flop. Oh, I on. know. I know. I know. Uh, are you held... Look, just, just give him... Are you... Are you held hostage right now? No. You, uh, say, say blue if you're in danger. Use it Look, son, I don't need your help, okay? You uh, fucking cop. Northern roof of the so you're you're not in danger. Uh, uh nah. Okay. So no one's holding you against your will right now? This is not a trick question, I promise. Is currently what? What talking to, to rat. Person Pips week a call to show waiting for that phone call to end. Boy, what do you want me to say? What? To inform, continuing my circle around Deputy. Um, Pips week might be in a tow truck. Uh, they said they were towing with their hostage. Boy. I don't, I don't know exactly, but yeah, so look up for a tow truck. Sorry, one second. Jesse, <laughs> if you were in danger, use blue in a fucking sentence, please. Uh, I lost a Pip squeak in what? Bear what do you want me to say? Blue neon me or you? With bear face. Oh my god. Would you happen to know the plate? Oh, what's that up? Uh, 662 regarding that. The Neon came and brought him to MRPD where he collected the gray Glendale when I was taking photos of it. Oi, Ratcon, what do you want me to say? That I'm what? That, that I'm what? Yeah, I'm fine. Fine. Yeah, nah. And let fucking uh, David go, cunt. Yeah, no. Let David go. So, so you're not you're not in danger, but the rat wants you to say. Me in danger? No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, just let David go. Just let David go. Okay. Yeah, you fucking cunt. If uh, oh, okay. All right. Fucking coppers. I just call someone from ADMC. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, yeah, bye. Bye-bye. I don't know what the fuck just happened, so I guess she's with the rat. I need a status check. I asked her to use blue in a sentence oh, if she's in danger, and she said, I don't need your fucking help. And then she's like, hold on, rat, what do you want me to say? And then she goes, I'm fine, just let David go. I'm not letting him go. This is fucking stupid. Thank you. That could have just been me. Um, I... What the fuck are we supposed to do in this situation? This is over assault with a deadly weapon. Okay. I'm I'm Lucas, could I call you real quick? If I'm uh, officer. Yeah, what's up? Uh, Hello. Hey, can I get a second opinion? Yeah, what's up? Loki has someone in custody for assault with a deadly weapon. Okay. I believe it's Maynard or I don't know what this guy's name is. David, I I think. But Pipsqueak said that he's going to take someone hostage and he's going to hold someone hostage for forcing us to release David from our custody, who is no. in jail. And I called Jesse to confirm because Pipsqueak claimed he, he kidnapped Jesse Adler. Uh -huh. which I don't think Pipsqueak realizes that he just picked the wrong person to kidnap. But uh, Jesse said, no, 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 I'm fine. Just let David go. 
So, so do you think they're taking Jesse's hostage right now? I think so. I asked Jesse to use blue in a sentence if she's in danger, and she did. She told me that she is capable of handling herself. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, so Jesse Adler's probably taking hostage somewhere by Pipsqueak. I mean, this is over assault with a deadly. Yeah, I mean, regardless of what it's over, we still need to like find them so that we can like try and get Jesse free. But that's not gonna be an. Yeah, I mean, we need we need like proof of life, right? So. Yeah, uh, I I just I, I don't know what we should do because that are, are we are we supposed to let people out for being in our custody? Wait, what do you mean from? MRPD, like when you're about yeah. to turn that person up? No, that's not happening. Five, ten, eight. Yeah. Um, no. All right, let me talk to Loki because Loki's not letting this guy go, and I don't blame him. But, um, yeah, no, okay. we don't do that. Okay. As I figured, I just wanted to confirm. Let me talk I mean, to it's Loki. A, it's, and... I'll be honest with you. It's as simple as saying, like, I don't know what to tell you. They were already sent out before you said all this. Da da da. Like, like you're a liar, you're a well, fucking ass no, off. Problem, you're real. Problem is, uh, yeah. Let me, uh. Because, I mean, obviously, we want to, like, make sure that, like, Jesse is not fucking dead and, like, protect, like, Jesse's life if they are taken hostage. Should we just but, recommend that, like, listen, no, no. we literally cannot release him, no. but, like, th there's nothing that can happen where we can release him and your demands are irrational? Because at this point, Pipsqueak knows that he hasn't been sent up yet. Yeah, I mean. I would say it as much, in my opinion. Yeah, I, like we like he's in our custody already. He's not even getting a big charge. It's a little fucking felony. Yeah. So let me let me talk to Loki and give him my my two cents, and I'll I'll yeah. call you back. Bye bye. Thanks, Lucas. Bye bye. All right. Lucas though. I I confirmed too with Lucas. I didn't I didn't allude. I wanted to hear Lucas's unadulterated opinion. I'm like, we're not supposed to let people go that are. No, we're not. And he goes, fuck no. I said, okay, just making yeah. sure. I said, so he, here's the deal. He goes, honestly, it might be easier just to be like, listen, we already sent him up like before all this started. What Problem the fuck? is, I said if we send him up, I think this is what happens. This is as simple as saying to him. This week's calling me. Tell him you'll call him back in in thirty seconds. I'll call you back in like 30 seconds, okay? It's as simple as telling him and being like, listen, we literally cannot release him. We cannot. We are here. If yeah. you want if you want to make demands, that's fine. Was, we need we need proof of was, life. We need something yeah. reasonable within demands. Your demands are not going to hold. And if he says anything in regard I mean, honestly, start off with telling him proof of life. We get units around. We tell him to release the hostage and we ask for more reasonable demands. We try to. We needed, we needed like visual, like. What, that's what I'm saying. We, have nothing. we need proof of life. Start with proof of life and we tell him in person, your demands are not reasonable. We literally cannot fulfill those. And if he has a problem with that and he alludes to what everyone alludes to, and that's, I'm going to kill the hostage then. That's when you tell him, okay, you do anything to the hostage, you're going to get fucking shot. Either you can walk out of this alive or you're going to walk out of this with fucking lead. Loki, has David woken up yet from his headache? Yeah, he's, he's down here. So I I, I, um, I think that's the, the, the best plan of attack. I don't I, I would rather see proof of life wherever he's at, and if he refuses to show proof of life, then there's nothing we can continue with, but we need to make sure that we have them in a position so we can get units to pursue. Uh, I mean you mean shoot. Uh well, yeah, if Pipsqueak's gonna be a dumbass and try and shoot Jesse, then yeah. If you shoot something, yeah, I'm and now Pipsqueak's on the just drops them off, then we can just get someone to pursue, I guess, or units to pursue. Did I tell Pip on the phone that we literally can't do that? Because I was under the impression, because I remember a long time ago, at least like five years ago, that was like an un... It happened, it but is... it was... It, we. It's not supposed to happen. I don't... It, it feels weird. It feels scummy and weird, and... I don't know. I, I hate looking at a suspect in the cells and just saying, yeah, hey... We're gonna let you hey, know. So, first, before we can really start with any negotiation, seven, we need to have officers that see you in the hostage. Until that happens, with there's like no, drive. it's like a non-starter. I mean, you can come to the front of MRPD. Okay, bye. What's up? Oh, sorry. I thought I sorry. I thought you were hanging out. You want me to start negotiations? 
right, 225. I'm going to be requesting 77s in front of MRPD. Pipsqueak's going to be coming.